This show is brought to you by a man so successful, he got a uh, um, podcast. This is uh, Jeremy McComb, his podcast thing. Oh, oh Christ, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> hey, hey, happy Tuesday. We're back. Another week gone by. Another seven days of bettering ourselves, getting by, learning lessons, finding why, uh, finding ways to turn uh, lemons and obstacles into opportunities. I just got back from the Northwest, so I'm a little late today. Normally, I get these up in the morning, so you'll have to pardon me for being, uh, for being about 10 hours behind here. So I uh, flew back in from Idaho. We were up in Idaho reopening our club, uh, Nashville North up there. Finally uh, getting some businesses open and, and people finally getting able to get out and do some dancing, find a little normalcy and uh, getting out and uh, just having a great time. I saw so many people just enjoying life and dancing like nobody was watching. We've all heard that expression, you know, dance like no one's watching. And, and that's it, it got me to thinking about what I wanted to talk about this week, which is um, blending in. And for some of us, you know, I, I, you, we all remember the kids in school who just just wanted to f- fade into the background, not be noticed. You know, for some of us, it's a curse, uh, a feeling of being unseen or, you know, unimportant. And for others, it's a way to stay safe and unaffected and allows people to kind of just hang on that conveyor belt of life, not taking chances, just getting that paycheck every two weeks from the cubicle job that they hate, but it doesn't demand their best. And, you know, the job that just allows you to get through with minimal effort, lax, easy. And, you know, I know some people that that's appealing to, but at what cost? And and watching people dance like their lives depended on it, just cutting loose, getting out, just got me to thinking about, you know, that may sound appealing to just have this lax, easy, no high highs, no low lows, just, you know, in the middle, just getting through it, to never push yourself. What, at what cost does that come? To just barely get through without being noticed. Not, you know, to never push yourself to see what you're really, truly capable of. And... I think the biggest thing that we have to fight when it comes to that is uh, our own voice. We've all got it. That, That voice that we use against ourselves, the voice of doubt, that voice inside our mind. Maybe it's a teacher that told you you weren't going to amount to shit, or maybe it was a parent. Maybe it was uh, some, you know, asshole authority figure in your life who told you you were never going to be anything. And that's the voice that replays that we use against ourselves all the time to keep ourselves in this vicious cycle of mediocrity. Because what if we fail? What if we look dumb? What if we lose? What if they're all right? What if I don't know what I'm doing? We habitually settle for less than our best. We learn it. We learn it from watching people around us do it as kids. And then we get older and we teach our kids to follow the same path, to settle, to do just what's needed to get through without being singled out, without, you know, sticking out in a crowd because, you know, we don't want to fail a class. We don't want to lose a job. We don't want to risk being embarrassed. So we're subconsciously taught to blend in, not to rock the boat when we're in it uh, because, uh, It just ends up rippling into mediocrity in our lives and then in turn our kids' lives and then their kids and their kids and it ripples out into society as a whole, which is where this entitlement that's out there right now, I think, where it comes from. I don't know. We continually, though, our choices, we're continually making self-limiting choices that are disguised as practicality. That's our biggest downfall. I've got bills to pay. I've got this. I've got a car payment. I've got that. Well, we all have that. We all have things in our lives that depend on us getting things done to be able to have a house, to be able to have food, to be able to have necessities. 
but it comes down to what you are willing to do to get those done. So yes, following our dreams to be an artist or a rodeo cowboy or a fighter or starting your own business, it will mean that shit is going to get hard. It's going to get extremely hard and you're going to have to sacrifice yourself, your body, your time, your money, your soul to get where you're trying to go. You're going to have to sacrifice it all. And then you're going to fail. And then you're going to lose. These are things I, we can all promise each other in this uh, game of life, which has uh, no scoreboard. We're going to fail. We're going to lose. The difference in who succeeds and who doesn't is how we react to it. Do you quit when shit gets hard? Or do you find a way? That's the difference. My dad used to tell me when I first moved to Nashville, he goes, man, there's only two kinds of people in the music business. There's those who make it and those who quit. Don't be the one who quits. And there have been year after year after year that the thought crosses my mind. And I'm not saying that, that we shouldn't have the thoughts. The thoughts are going to be there. We're human. The thoughts are going to come that, that we're not good enough. We have the self-doubt. That's when we have to start fighting. And each of us have to find our own meaning of success. You don't have to be Bill Gates or LeBron James or Tom Brady or Garth Brooks to be a success. Genetics plays into that stuff. You know, I'm, I cannot dunk a basketball to save my life. Not an athlete in those terms. LeBron James, Tom Brady. I can't throw a football more than 15 yards probably. Um, you know, Bill Gates, I, I couldn't tell you the first thing about how to code a computer. I'm never going to be that. But my own version of success, to be able to be successful by uh, raising strong kids, to be a better person than I was yesterday, to be able to make a living doing what I love by going out, busting my ass, and finding a way to get it done. There are many, many avenues and abilities for our successes in each of our situations. And... In the end, uh, no matter what we're doing, we're all fighting the same battle. Each of us. Mediocrity or giving our best. These are all choices we make daily. And not just one day. We make this from the minute we wake up to the minute we go to bed. Mediocrity or are we going to give our best? Our all, no matter what in the circumstance, choosing between comfort and suffering to become the best version of ourselves. We talked about it a few podcasts back on scheduling suffering into your day. I, I do it every morning. People ask me all the time, why do you get up and do jujitsu and get your ass kicked every morning? <laughs> you know, or even guys in my jujitsu class, hey, why don't you come to the night class? Because there's something about making myself get up. I got up this morning at 445. I went to bed at one. Now, am I tired as shit today? Absolutely. Can I control that? Yes, I can. I can go to bed earlier the night before. <laughs> but if I don't, I have to pry my ass up out of that bed and I have to go in there and get my ass kicked. Because not only does it force me to stick to a standard that I preach about all the time, it makes me better. It makes me feel better. And it's something that my son sees every morning when I come home at 7.30 or I get home at a quarter to eight in the morning. I've been fighting for 90 minutes. My son sees me walk through the door with a gym bag covered in sweat. He's getting ready to go to school. He knows that's what I do in the morning. And it's important for me that he sees that. Um, because it's choosing comfort. I could stay in bed. It's comfortable. It's warm. But I don't want to just bring mediocrity through the day because I can promise you the days that I have stayed in bed, the days that I have let that voice in my head keep me in a warm ass bed under covers sleeping in until seven. When I get up, I'm pissed that I didn't go because I let myself down. And, um, you know, it's like, uh, no matter, no matter what we're doing, we're all fighting these battles right? Depression, doubt, anger, our upbringing, our weaknesses, our demons, those little buttons that 
that put us in weird situations or being singled out. All of us have to take these battles head on, whatever it is. And it reminds me of the military saying, which is uh, no one is coming. It's up to us. Life is not going to pick us up. It's not going to pat you on the back for trying. You're not going to get a participation trophy. Life will put its foot on your throat unless you kick it off and fight your way to your knees and eventually to your feet to get running. But you have to prepare yourself. We have to prepare ourselves for what life is going to put in each of our paths. Obstacles, backstabbers, tough decisions, false friends, hardships, letdowns, failures. How are you going to respond? How will you or will you uh, just be content to blend in, to do just enough to stay off the radar? Or will you fight? Are you going to put your back against the wall for your life? What are you willing to risk? If there's a plan B, you will quit. You'll go to it every time because when shit gets hard, when shit hits the fan, that's when people fall out. Um, there's a, a, a great, great, he's a Navy SEAL, a lot like Jocko Willink, um, with more F words, which falls down my path. <laughs> I'm a big fan of him. His name's uh, David Goggins. Um, has an amazing book called Can't Hurt Me. He was a Navy SEAL. I think he lost about 280 pounds or something crazy. Um, went through severe abuse as a child. Um, wrote this book, Can't Hurt Me. And he says, until you experience hardships like abuse or bullying or failures and disappointments, your mind remains soft and exposed. Life experience, especially negative experiences, help callous our mind. But it's up to us where that callous lines up. If we choose to see ourselves as a victim of circumstance into adulthood, that callous will become resentment that protects you from the unfamiliar. It will make you too cautious and untrusting and possibly too angry at the world and make you fearful of change, hard to reach, but not hard of mind. Um, again, that's David Goggins, the book called uh, Can't Hurt Me. Check it out. And most of us are motivated as hell to do anything to pursue our dreams until those around us remind us of the danger. The, the downside, our own limitations, and all the people before us that didn't make it. And sometimes this advice comes from, you know, moms and dads and well-intentioned places and aunts and uncles or grandparents. And they really believe that they're doing it for our own good. But if you let them, these people will continue to talk you out of your dreams. You have to demand the best of yourself. We have to show our kids, our spouses, our friends that you're more than just someone who blends into the background of the road most taken. You got to bet on yourself. We talk about it all the time on here. And it's really the whole premise of being too dumb to quit. When you should quit. When people are saying, why do you continually put yourself through this? Um, I, I, I chalk it up to the music business or jujitsu. You get hurt, you fall down, you lose a record deal, you lose a publishing deal, you lose all your money. What are you going to do? Do you quit? Do you fly back to Idaho? Play in clubs up there? There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not why I'm here. I wanted to show my kids. I wanted to show the people around me what I could endure and what I could make my way through. We all have to do that. We have to bet on ourselves and push ourselves through the hardest times in our lives to see what we're truly capable of. Most of the time, when we think we've given our all, we're sitting at about 50%. So much more to give. And I learned a lot about this. I, I wear a, a heart monitor uh, doing these jujitsu workouts in the morning. And you can be totally gassed. You feel like you can't breathe. Your heart's pounding out of your chest. You look at your heart monitor and you're not even in the red yet. And then you start to realize, or you're trapped under a guy much bigger than you, smashing down on you and, uh, and trying to choke you out. And you're telling yourself you can't breathe. You start panicking and then you realize you can't breathe. You just have to take a step back. You have to relax yourself, analyze the situation you're in, and find a way to get out of it. And sometimes that way is to lose. And then you learn. All right, I'm not gonna I'm gonna do my best to not let that happen again. We have to push ourselves in ways we didn't think we were capable of. We have to bet on ourselves. Don't blend in. 
We have to open ourselves up to that, that uneasy feeling of doing or learning something new. Open yourself up to feeling out of place because you're the only 50-year-old in that college class. Whatever the mountain is, whatever the thing that makes you uncomfortable, get to climbing, get to doing it now. And um, it's better, you're better. You're better than being wallpaper in some room that you hate. We have to stop using our self-doubt as a guiding light in our lives. If doubt is in the driver's seat, we're going to crash. You can push harder. You can go further. You can go on. Whatever it is going on in your life right now, you can and you will endure this. Now go do it and stop blending in because you're better than that. You got to go out, make a difference around you, help somebody who needs it. Be the change you want to see around you and continue to inspire uh, others by being too dumb to quit, by continuing to push on when people say, that you're crazy. So (laughs) thank you for being crazy. Thank you for joining me on the podcast. If you're enjoying it, uh, I want to thank you uh, for listening. Please share it with a few of your friends. Keep up with me over on Instagram, at MacombOver, on Facebook, on YouTube, official Jeremy McComb. Uh, Exciting week here in Nashville. I've got a brand new song coming out on Friday, February 5th, called Withdrawals. Um, we just shot a video for it. I'm super excited to share the song in the video. We, for those of you who might be Big Lebowski fans, um, we shot a <laughs> Big Lebowski themed inspired video with a bunch of my friends, um, including Dan Olson, who is a co-writer on the song. We wrote this over in Sweden last year, uh, two years ago, I guess. And so, uh, comes out Friday, February 5th. Uh, tell your friends, tell your mom and them and have them share it around too. So keep an eye out for that. Also, If you want to win some stuff, we have a ton of giveaways this week on all my social pages, Instagram and Facebook. So thank you again for being a part of this. Keep pushing. You're a badass. You got to remind yourself of that. And uh, thank you again for joining me on the Too Dumb to Quit podcast. Talk to you next week. (laughs) 